This week, after two years away, we revisit South Dakota's Custer State Park, a state park that really rivals any national park around. Plus, we talk about what Thanksgiving travel in the U.S. is going to be like. It might be a little bit different than was expected. That and a whole lot more. This is the RV Miles Podcast. RV Miles is brought to you by L.L. Bean, your source for warm, cozy styles this fall. For 108 years, L.L. Bean has staked their reputation on making comfortable clothing and gear to help you enjoy the healthy benefits of being outside. From legendary main-made boots to layers that are just the right weight to flannel shirts that out-cozy all others. Find joy in the tried and true. Visit LLBean.com to find a store or shop now. L.L. Bean. Be an outsider. Welcome to episode 170 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. We are coming to you uh, for the last time, for now, from the state of Arkansas. We're uh, we're in the Ozark, Arkansas area, and uh, we're leaving here on Monday, heading back up uh, into the Midwest for for some family time, doctor's appointments, all sorts of you know. The yeah, fun we can't stuff. put it off any longer. It's time to <laughs> head back to the homestead. So traveling towards the cold. I'm gonna miss this this huge campsite. <laughs> I know. Where are we going to record the podcast after this? We've <laughs> I don't had, know. We've had this enormous, beautiful end spot here at this campground all to ourselves for two weeks. It has been the perfect place for you to do the news videos for RV Miles, for us to sit down and do the video version of this podcast. We also got to visit Fort Smith, which is nearby, and Mount Magazine, which is the highest point in the state of Arkansas, also nearby. We're going to cover those on a on a future episode. But uh, gosh, this is this is nice, and the weather is nice, and it's not going to be as nice when we head north. I know we got to check a, a summiting of a mountain off our to do <laughs> list. So 20... if anyone, anyone ever asks if we've summited a mountain, oh, my, <laughs> why yes, yes, we have actually. We've summited a few. <laughs> All in a vehicle. <laughs> we've driven to a few and a few we've walked the <laughs> final hundred feet to the top. Well, speaking of those news videos that uh, that you mentioned, I have a new news video up on the RV Miles YouTube channel that you ought to check out. I did a sort of roundup of a lot of things that are happening at Camping World, the nation's largest RV dealership chain. And whether you're a fan of theirs or not, uh, what they do, uh, because they are so large, affects the industry as a whole. And they've got a lot of stuff coming down the pike that uh, that might be interesting to you. So check out that video on the YouTube channel. And, and please let us know in the comments. I think we're going to make that our, our question of the week. So check that out and let us know in the comments, you know, what, what you think of the changes they're talking about making and some of the, uh, the new things they're working on. I was really surprised. By that video, there are a lot of things that they are doing, putting their hands into that I I didn't even know was on their radar. Well, a, a lot of people don't realize how big Camping World is. They're not just a dealership. They also run Good Sam, which produces a ton of RV shows across the country, Motor Home and Trailer Life magazine, um, lots of stuff. I think people know how big Camping World is. <laughs> I think they just don't realize how much stuff Camping World does. <laughs> because that video dropped and all you have to do, and we've said this time and time again, is say CW. And people, people have opinions. They be clutching their pearls. <laughs> they start lying. They start lighting dumpsters on fire. <laughs> like <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Tables the, get flipped over. I mean, it yes. is. Do not enter the comment yeah. section on that video uh, if you, you are faint warned. of heart. You know that meme that's out there with the woman that's screaming and then the cat's over at the other yeah. table? Like but. a lot of times I'm like, commenters lady, camping world cat. <laughs> like, that is exactly what happened. Well, the Thanksgiving holiday is coming up and... Uh, you know, we're figuring out what we're doing still. I think we kind of have it narrowed down. 
Uh, but a lot of people are still trying to sort of figure out what this Thanksgiving is going to look like. I think a lot of us are going to have a more intimate, uh, immediate family Thanksgiving. Is, is something funny about that? <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> you, do you like the word intimate? Is that, is that, the, is that what's so funny? That's the word that got me. <laughs> it's going to be a real intimate Thanksgiving. Well, anyway, AAA had been projecting Thanksgiving travel to be, you know, fairly big this year. Maybe not the biggest ever, but that people were still planning a lot of Thanksgiving tra travel. That was sort of the last we had heard. But in the last few days, AAA has, you know, they've they've done the survey again. They do they do this for every major holiday. They figure out what the travel trend is going to be and what the travel trends for the whole year are going to be. And they found that a lot of people just in the last couple of weeks have really cut back on their Thanksgiving plans, probably because the coronavirus is spiking again all over the country. Yeah. So they did say when they put this first study out uh, back in October, September, I can't remember exactly when it was, that a lot of travelers were still saying that decisions were going to be last minute. They were planning to do something, but they were also staying open in case they needed to switch. I think that's been the theme of 2020. Now, as we get closer to Thanksgiving, and we are seeing this huge spike in numbers again, especially in the Midwest, they are predicting that 10% fewer people are going to be on the road than originally predicted. And that bumps that number down to the lowest number they have seen since 2008. Wow. So the roads are going to be really quiet. They did say, you know, anticipate traffic in major metropolitan areas uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. That's pretty typical. But a lot of people have decided last minute decision. They're scrapping those plans. And that's probably for the best. Yeah. You know, a lot of states are starting to go back into lockdown. A lot of cities, major cities are. It's just best if you can stay home, stay home. Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that after Thanksgiving, we're going to see a Thanksgiving related spike in oh, cases. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. So, you know, the roads are going to be quiet, uh, but the theme for travel, it seems like going into the holiday season is going to have to be wait and see. Speaking of the holiday season, uh, we want to let you know that next week is going to be our big annual holiday gift guide episodes. We're going to talk about lots of different fun pieces of gear and gadgets and just fun little gifts that you can give the camping and outdoors and national park lover in your your family. So please make sure to come back next week and check that out. And uh, I'm Abby's excited. Like, she's like I, giggling. I'm excited because I set a task upon us yesterday when we were taking our daily walk around the campground. <laughs> and I said, we have to come up with two or three, either each or total. We haven't flushed it out yet. But it has to be like what you would give someone, say, if you were doing a white elephant or a gag gift for the holidays. Something and I, I, funny. I already have dibs on the, KF, the KFC you, camping lot. And now you just gave it away. So now it's like not, it's We've like not even funny. we already talked about it, though. I know, but give it a few weeks and forget and then you bring it back. <laughs> and now, you know, now 11 herbs and spices. Since I mentioned the, the KFC camping log a couple weeks ago, Ooh. if you didn't listen to that episode, it's a. It's a fire. It's one of those, <laughs> you know, man-made fire logs that are come wrapped in paper that is scented with 11 herbs and spices from KFC. And they're selling them at Walmarts uh, in, in certain places. But a lot of people are out of them. But we've been getting people posting pictures in the Facebook group and stuff of, of seeing them in, <laughs> in the flesh. <laughs> suggestions for how we can have our own log if we can't find one like literally just buy a bucket of chicken buy a bucket of chicken and, and then, a Dura flame log and yeah, just call it a much. day yeah pretty much <laughs> so that's kind of an idea that we wanted to have for our gift guide just to make it fun you know there's going to be a lot of really great gifts on there for the outdoor enthusiast in your life but we also wanted to have a little bit of fun with it so if you have one of those items that you would have put into like a gag gift or a white elephant feel free to email that to us at editor at rvmiles.com and share that suggestion with us. And then maybe we can use it for next week's gift guide. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have the answer to last week's brain teaser. And we're going to talk about Custer State Park in the great state of South Dakota, one of our most favorite places on earth. Be right back. Outdoor enthusiasts of all stripes will enjoy Pelican gear on their adventures. 
hard-sided Pelican Elite coolers are all made in America and are available in a wide number of sizes. Get a 20-quart for short day trips, a 50-quart for week-long adventures, or a wheeled 45-quart to keep the fun rolling along. Pelican backs all their hard-sided coolers with a lifetime warranty, too. RV Miles listeners can get a free day venture tumbler when they visit EliteCooler.com slash RV Miles and spend over $100. Fall is here, so it's time to start thinking about prepping for the winter off-season. Whether you own an RV, a travel trailer, or a camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping, plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use promo code RV Miles at checkout. EmpireCovers.com. Protect what you love. It's time for the answer to last week's brain teaser, which went like this. The majority of countries that start with an A also end in an A. Those include Algeria, America, Argentina, Australia. But there are two countries that start with an A but end in a different letter. What are they? And the answer was Afghanistan. And please don't let me muck this name up. Azerbaijan. 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 We only just listened to this like 12 times <laughs> on pronouncenames.com. <laughs> Which is never accurate. So I don't even know why we yeah, go there. Yeah, who even knows? Uh, Azerbaijan. We'll have a new brain teaser later on in the show. Okay, it's time to talk about Custer State Park. We, uh, we visited Custer State Park in our bus conversion about two years ago. We talked about it on episodes, I think, 61, 62, and 63, something like that, back um, over 100 episodes ago. We did a three-episode arc on the whole Black Hills area, including... Badlands, Wind Cave, and Custer. We lumped Mount Rushmore with Custer, which is yeah. what we're doing again today. We didn't have as much time there this time as we did last time. Well, we we did, but we, we kind of stayed inside when we were in the southern part of the the uh, area, but different strokes <laughs> in 2020 than when we were there in 2018, yeah. for sure. Um, so, but we want to, because a lot of people don't listen that far back. And also, you know, we have some new observations. We thought we'd go over that area again, because it's, it's one of the most popular areas for RVers to visit. I can't tell you how many times I see in some of the different Facebook groups, people asking about know what to do and what to visit in the Black Hills area and Custer State Park is really central to it. It is a massive state park and like I said in the opening it really does rival a lot of the national parks out there. It does and you know we had the pleasure this time of having weather that was just gorgeous from start to finish. When we were there in 2018, our trip got cut short because there was a snowstorm coming in. And prior to that, we just had some really, really cold weather. This time around, we had a beautiful fall weather adventure while we were there. So that made, I think, the park even busier. And I remember them saying as we were getting ready to leave, and this would have been towards the beginning of October, that they were keeping campgrounds open in Custer that should have normally been closing by that time because the demand was so high and the weather was still so good. Yeah. So it was a very different experience for us in 2020 than it was in 2018 in regards to crowd levels in the park. We stayed this time again at the Bluebell Campground. Uh, the the state park itself has several campgrounds and it's also surrounded by the Custer National Forest and there are several campgrounds within the Custer National Forest. But the Bluebell Campground is sort of central in the park and we just like it. And I can't say that it's better or worse than some of the other ones, but we really like it. It's a it's a decent size and has really nice, clean bathhouses and water and electric available. It's higher up in the park, too, which I think is yeah. another reason why we really like it. We get into the park a little bit more. It's a lot quieter up there in regards to traffic. It's just, it's it's our kind of campground if we're going to be in a really popular location like that. We also stayed on our way to Custer. We stayed at Rocky Point Recreation Area and then on our way, which is up near Sturgis. And then on our way out of Custer, we went back to Angostura Recreation Area, which is on the south side of Custer. That's 
kind of closer to Wind Cave National Park and the town of Hot Springs. So they're all three South Dakota state parks. And South Dakota state parks uh, do require you to pay uh, pay an entrance fee on top of camping. Um, so if you do you do book a campground, you know, it's twenty five dollars a night. So it's a fair price for for a state park campground. But then you have to pay an entrance fee on top of that. But you can get an annual pass that I think is thirty five or forty dollars uh, for for one vehicle to enter. If you have two vehicles, this is kind of the little bit annoying thing. Um, so if you have like a motorhome and you're towing a car behind it, they actually they actually require you to get a sticker for that car that you tow behind it as well. And I think it's a, an extra $15 for the second vehicle. But if you're towing a trailer, you don't have to do that, that yeah. extra step. So we got our, just a point of reference too, we bought our state pass sticker back in September on the very first day that you could buy them for the 2021 season. That pass is actually good for us until May of 2022. That rounds out to being about 18 months. So I'm not quite sure like what their thought process is, but that's a really good deal. It was $35, $40 for an 18 month state park pass in a really popular RVer state. It's a, it's a strange thing because that's the pass that they will sell again up until September 1st yeah. of next year. <laughs> yeah. The same one being good until May of 2022. So like the earlier you get it, obviously the the better off you are, but it's not that much money. So. No, no, it's not at all. Compared to some of the other state parks in the country, that's a really reasonable price, $40 for the year. Now, Custer State Park is a really big state park. And uh, the the sort of main features of it that we love, I, I think, are the three scenic drives. They're just fantastic scenic drives that are, I think are kind of about the right length. Yeah. Right. You know, they're not, they take maybe an hour, hour 15 or so to do each one of them. You, there's not like, you're not gone all day to do one. They're just long enough that you really get a nice drive in, but just short enough that nobody needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Now they're not drives that you're going to want to do in a big RV. No. If you have like a truck camper or something, maybe Iron Mountain Road. Maybe. I don't know. You'll have to check the tunnel sizes because they both, uh, two at least two of them, the Iron Mountain Road and the Needles Highway have have some very small tunnels on them. <laughs> one-way tunnels. Well, not one. There are two-way tunnels, but one lane. And you can reach out the window and, and touch the rock yes. walls. You, and you don't have to, like, stretch out the window no. either. You just put your hand out and then you just graze the wall as you're going past. And what's really interesting about these uh, two-way, one-way sort of situations is that a lot of times when you're coming up on that tunnel, you actually don't know if someone else is coming from the opposite direction until you are almost in the tunnel completely. And then it's like, if somebody else is kind of already there or they're coming in, then it becomes, okay, who's backing out first? There's not a lot of sight lines in these tunnels, like once you're approaching them. The smallest one I think is on the uh, Needles Highway. And if you're driving a dually truck, you can fit through it, <laughs> but you've got four <laughs> inches on either side. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just, you're going to want a, a, a visual right down the center and then do not get distracted by anything else. Just stick to that visual and go through. So what we have found over the last couple of visits, we had our friends with us that we've been traveling with for most of the year who are sadly no longer with us anymore, but uh, they were being introduced to the area for the first time. So we were able to kind of show it to them, which was, which was fun. So, uh, but the, the, the park was built in order to showcase Mount Rushmore, at least the Iron Mountain Road was. Um, so Iron Mountain Road goes from, sort of the visitor center area of, of the park. And it is a twisty turny drive with some pigtail turns, which I love. I love pigtail turns. Loves the pigtail turns. And it has three tunnels that sort of frame route Mount Rushmore perfectly. It's a really cool thing. And then you can get to the top of Iron Mountain and you get this big vast vista with the tiny little Mount Rushmore in the background. And that's all before you get to Mount Rushmore. And then it spits you out at the very end at Mount Rushmore. I have to say that Iron Mountain Road is actually my favorite part of Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. If I couldn't go to Mount Rushmore, if someone said to me, you have two choices, go to Mount Rushmore or drive Iron Mountain Road. 
I would pick Iron Mountain Road every single time. And, you know, those of the you that have been listening for a while know that, you know, we have a few car sick problems in our family. Um, even though it's twisty and turny because of the length and the slow speed, it's not too bad if, if no, you have those issues. We didn't have a ton of issues with the kids or myself. Um, but you know, sometimes it's a gentle reminder to the driver that, uh, the pigtail turns are not a part of like the NASCAR course. And we just <laughs> slow it down a little bit. Like we shouldn't see smoke coming up from the back tires, <laughs> things like that. Okay. So Mount Rushmore itself, is it... I, for us, it's a very, uh, a fairly quick visit. There is a, a museum and a film that you can watch. There's a short trail that takes you up close to uh, the memorial itself. But you pay ten dollars to park, or five dollars if you're a senior. Your national park pass will not work there, and you go in, you go up and see it, and it, it's there. It is what it is, and uh, and you go. I mean, it's 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 worth visiting for sure, but. Is is it going to take up your whole day? No. And for us, even visiting the second time after two years, it was even shorter. Yeah. We were in and out and I think maybe like half an hour tops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially because we didn't go into the museum and spend the time in the museum because of the coronavirus. So didn't do a junior ranger booklet. We didn't need to yeah. do any of those things. It was kind of just getting there, seeing it. It was really because our friends that we had been with, they had never been before. So we wanted them to have the experience and whatever that meant for them. And then once they were good, we were good. And we moved on back to the road. So Mount Rushmore is on the very north end of Custer State Park. It's outside of Custer State Park, but it's on the north end of the park. You take Iron Mountain Road up there from the middle of the park and you can then come back on the Needles Highway or, or vice versa. Or if you're staying near Mount Rushmore, you can come into Custer on one of the two and back up the other. Just make a loop. Um, and it's a really great way to visit the northern half of the park. Don't skip the Needles Highway. No. It is the most beautiful scenery in the area, hands down, period. Now, I have to say, the first time we did this, we did those two drives on two separate days. I prefer that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This drive a, doing Iron Mountain there and Needles back didn't allow us the kind of time I would have liked to stop and really kind of take that drive in. The Be problem is, though, then you have to take if you take Iron Mountain one way and you don't want to do Needles, then you still have to take Iron Mountain back. You yeah. Know. And that's, I mean, that doesn't bother me though, because a lot of times then you end up seeing something that you didn't see the first time because you're yeah. seeing it from, you know, the opposite direction now. And so I like the slower pace of travel. That's just me personally, especially on these scenic drives, because we often have to stop for people who aren't feeling well. So I don't like the pressure of we're trying to get both these drives in and Mount Rushmore in this teeny tiny bit of time. So it is absolutely doable, but if you can split those two drives up into two separate days, that's what I recommend. The Needles Highway is named because of these spire rock formations that they call the Needles, and they they live in this sort of vast vista. You get lots of beautiful views of the entire region along the Needles Highway. But also up there is Sylvan Lake, which is a lake up in the mountains, and there's a little lodge up there, and uh, and uh, I think there's a campground at Sylvan too. Is yes. there nearby Sylvan Lake, and uh, and there and there are hiking trails and, and such. But you can just uh, park up at Sylvan Lake and sort of take a walk around the area there and check out the the beautiful scenery of the lake before moving on to the rest of Needles Highway. It's sort of Sylvan Lake is sort of at the the north end, the beginning. Uh, or end, depending which way you look at it, of the Needles Highway. And we tried to do that this time. So we've actually never fully walked all the way around Sylvan Lake. We've actually never really visited Sylvan Lake. And so we tried to do that again this time. And the one day we had for it, there was a wedding. Yeah. And it was packed. And there was really nowhere to park. And that was above our comfort level. So we have yet to enjoy Sylvan Lake, but we hear it's very beautiful. We, we were able to drive around and, yes. and look a little bit, get out of the car and peek around. And then yeah. we went to a nearby trailhead and peeked around there. We uh, did a lot of peeking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of exploring. And then took the road back. And, and on both of these roads are also some fairly big meadows where you can see some wildlife. You'll often spot a few bison, uh, and, and especially if you head out on them uh, at dusk or in the morning, you'll have a better shot of seeing wildlife. But if you really want to see some wildlife, the entire lower half 
the southern half of Custer State Park is ringed by the Wildlife Loop Road. Now, this is one we skipped in 2018. And uh, we kind of, after doing it this time, kicked ourselves for skipping it because it's beautiful and you really do see a lot of wildlife. We actually felt we didn't. Do you? I was about to jump in here because... We didn't see any wildlife till we got to the stables where no, the bison. No, we did too. We saw. What did we see? We saw prairie dogs and we saw deer before we got to the bison. Right. But we had already seen those things in the park. Well, so we I, just saw them there. But we saw, we saw a prairie dog town yeah. and we saw a deer. And well, this is a really long. See, here's my thing. It's not that we didn't see them and, you know. Whatever. It's that this is always touted as like the drive for the wildlife viewing in the park. And so if you go in there with that expectation and then you're driving around and you drive for like 40 minutes and all you see is a prairie dog town and a deer there and prairie dogs are adorable. I mean, we love prairie dogs, but, you know, this we even did kind of as a a bit of a whim. We do this every once in a while. We wake up, the day's going, we've been up for like 10, 15 minutes, and then we just get this wild hair. And that's what Wildlife Loop Road was. It was like, we have this wild hair. Let's go do this. And we were like, no, 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 come on, kids. You can even eat breakfast in the car. Like, let's just go. And then that day just, that day was epic. That was a really epic day. The Wildlife Loop Road then spits you out uh, at the end if you go the way we went near the the visitor center again, which is a very nice visitor it center is. for a state park with a nice film and stuff. Kevin Costner um, does the narration for the film. <laughs> it's top quality. But it, it actually starts near Bluebell, near the Bluebell campground. And so we were able to pick it up really near where we stayed. And, uh, you know, part of the reason why we sort of love the Bluebell area up there is, A, most of the campsites are, are really nice. We've stayed at, uh, we stayed while we were there this time at sites 9 and 14. Mm-hmm. Um, we liked nine the best. I think we have not stayed really in what are the best campsites in this park, which is virtually all of them on the outside. Across uh, from? Either, either, on either side. The, the one, all the campsites yeah. on the outside edge all the way around are, are some of the best sites, I think. Because they're backed up to the woods. Yeah. And the, so you not only have your campsite but then you have this huge space of land behind you and it's, uh, yeah, I don't know why we don't book those. Uh, probably because they weren't available, but you know. Uh, true. I mean, <laughs> although we did book in June yeah. of this year. It, it's we did a good. popular campground. It, it does book early. So it is one that you'll want to book several months out, if not more. It books early, but people also cancel yeah. right before we they get there. And we saw that several times where people would roll in looking for a spot for that night. And the camp host would say, oh, you know what? Somebody just canceled at this spot for the weekend or for the next two days. And, and then someone gets it. It's a big gamble to drive into this campground yeah. though without a, a spot because it is a long way into the park to get there through some twisty roads. And I'm surprised that some of the people arriving as late as they did being like, uh, do you have a site for me? My guess is though, is that they know that there's boondocking to be had in the national yeah. forest. There is so, boondocking yeah, nearby. so they're probably coming in if they can't get the campsite, then they're going to go and they're going to boondock not too far outside of the park. One of the reasons we like this this campground as well is there is a little general store right there, which is nice if you have any last minute provision needs. Um, we did get okay cell service, but then there's also the Bluebell Lodge, which is sort of across the way from the campground. And the Bluebell Lodge has a, a a nice restaurant that we got to eat at. It was an interesting thing because this is the first time in the entire time we've been on the road that we left our kids at home by themselves. Shh. <laughs> don't uh, tell us. Okay. It's okay. So, and, and walked the five minutes o- across the, across the road to the restaurant and had dinner outside on their patio and yeah. headed back. We had a date night. We did. It was really very weird. I made the kids stay on messenger with me pretty much the whole time. So it's really like, They were there, but not there. Uh, And they were all set up and comfy. And, you know, they were watching a video and whatever, doing their thing. 
And we walked down there. We had dinner. We had drinks. It was just the two of us. It was outside. It was right around sunset. It was beautiful. And it's such a nice gift when you land in a campground where you have an option like that. You know, that happened to us too when we were um, in Mancos at Echo Basin. We didn't ever take advantage of actually going and having dinner there, but we would go down to their bar every once in a while, get a couple drinks and sit out on the patio. Um, So it's a nice, for full-time RVers, for families, full-time RV families, it's really nice when you have that option that you can go and create a date night for yourself and your partner, but still have your kids accessible and easily be able to get to them if you need to and know that they're safe in the campsite itself. So, you know, we really appreciate that. The food was good, too. It was it was decent. You had like some buffalo chili. I had buffalo chili that was like in in like a cast iron fry pan sort of situation with some. Uh, the cornbread was good. good. Mm -hmm. I stuck with a salad because I just really wanted some greens. And then I got it and I was like, greens are really hard to get up here, aren't they? (laughs) Because the greens were not so green, uh, but I still enjoyed it. And then we had some local beer. And of course, that's always, and it's always a treat when we get to go somewhere and try local beer. We did visit one area of this park that we hadn't visited the last time. And that is the Stockade Lake area. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's another beautiful Mountain Lake, it's not a popular area of the park at all from what we could tell. It is one of those parks that is definitely big enough to have lots of different areas and some being more popular than others. And this is the one hike that we were able to do is the Stockade Lake hike, which is sort of uh, surprisingly a little bit more difficult than we thought it would be. This hike caught us off guard. Yeah. For sure. We thought we were taking a very easy one and a half mile loop trail. It said moderate, but, you know, I kind of was like, pshaw, like when I was reading the description, um, it climbs pretty much the entire time. Yeah. Until the very end of it. And About then you come two, down quickly. Yeah. two thirds of the way through the hike, then you start going down and you, you go down quick. So it's one and a half miles, but I do believe you climb almost 400 feet. Yeah. And it's, it's fairly rocky, like small rocks, but like yeah. the kind that, you know, it hurts after a while to be walking on them. Yeah, the kids were not happy with me. No. I, I sold that so bad. <laughs> but it was a fun hike. It was a good it hike. It was a fun hike. And it gave some really beautiful views of the park as well. And of course, you know, the colors were starting to turn. It was great. I absolutely recommend it. Your kids can do it. Our kids could do it. It's just that I sold it wrong. Stockade Lake also has a little swimming beach there and a playground, which was sort of a nice, well, the kids, we didn't do the swimming, but the kids got to hang out at the playground and play. So that was a lot of fun for them. Absolutely. So that's so, it. So that's it. That was kind of our, <laughs> our whole time in, in Custer State Park. I do want to say one thing about the the campground that I forgot to mention, though, is that there is no dump station at the campground. Actually, none of the campgrounds in the park have a dump station. There is one dump station in the park, but again, it is a big park. Um, so this is not a, a, a park where you will, you know, take your blue boy and haul it behind you uh, to go dump at the dump station because you're going to be driving like 20 miles with that behind your truck. (laughs) Yeah, that caught us because last time we were there in 2018, we had Wanderbus, we had the composting toilet. None of those things mattered to us. And so when we booked it, we weren't even thinking about that. Yeah. And then we got there or we got really close to getting there and we were like, oh, there's no dump station. Where's the nearest dump station? Where's the nearest fresh water? None of that had registered with us. So... The we dump were, station is sort of down by the visitor center mm-hmm. near the near the wildlife loop road. It's on the wildlife loop road, actually. Yeah, that was a lesson learned for sure. That was a definite like newbie uh, moment for us. Yeah. So uh, so just make sure to think about that, and depending on what campground you stay at, and and uh, but you can get you can fill your water at the at the campground. I, I think I said that there's water at the campground. There's not. There's electricity only. Yeah, and the water filling, I'm not quite sure. That's not advertised. So they don't say on the website that there's water up at the campsites. This seems to be 
sort of camp host led it's a, a little it's bit. It's a spigot so, by the yeah. by the bathhouse. So. so I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent always going to be there. I I do think that that was kind of the camp host uh, initiating that and and making that an option for people because he would come out and supervise it or assist it every time someone tried to use it. But like I said, the bathhouses are are really nice. They they keep them very clean. I guess the final thing to say about this park too is is that you might see on a map that it looks really close to Rapid City and think, oh, you know, I'll just be able to drive from the campground into town and get what I need, go get dinner or whatever. It it takes well over an hour to get from the Bluebell campground in the middle of the park into Rapid City, probably an hour 15. Um, so just, you know, keep that. Get your mind. groceries before you go. All right, that is Custer State Park. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have our Fresh Tank Black Tank segment and the new Brain Teaser. Be right back. When it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route, adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did I mention all of that is included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. It is now time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? So my black tank goes to campgrounds that make the decision that not all people should have accessible trash cans. Oh my goodness. So for whatever reason, <sighs> this campground that we are at has taken all of the trash cans, all of the dumpsters, I should say, and they've put all of them away and locked them up except for one. And that one is three quarters of a mile from our campsite. I, I guess to give you a picture of what this campground is laid out, like it is like one long strip that is three quarters of a mile long. Yeah. The whole thing is one long strip along a riverfront. And we are on the, we are in the very last site on one end. We had a dumpster right across from us. They took that dumpster away. They actually, it's there. It's locked up in a locked fence. Up. There's a dumpster that was in the middle of, of the campground and they have removed that. So now all the way back up at the entrance station, is a dumpster. What is so weird is after the Veterans Day holiday camping, and this place was packed last weekend, there was so much trash in this dumpster and nobody came on Monday to get it. Nobody came on Tuesday. Nobody came on Wednesday. They came and they took care of the other two dumpsters up front, but they completely left this one. Then they showed up, I think on Thursday, they dumped it and then they locked it up with the other one. So I can only assume that the trash company's like, we don't want to drive in anymore to have to deal with these dumpsters. So this campground is really, really busy again this weekend. I was telling Jason, I said, I bet on their peak season, whatever that is, this is a party campground. I do not doubt it. That dumpster up by the entrance is pretty much full. Like it will be overflowing tomorrow when people leave. And so I'm black tanking this because this is a big campsite. But to tell your campers, well, first off, they didn't tell anybody. It just just disappeared. But three quarters of a mile to get to the nearest dumpster. We and we walk our trash like every day and um, sometimes more than once a day because well, yeah. we just keep it in, in grocery bags. We don't use like a big trash can. So the one I will say the one five we want to turn into a positive. Abby and I take lots of walks and it has extended the length of our walks. <laughs> so we're getting a little bit more exercise because we're having to go all the way we to do. the end. So we're taking an hour, we're taking a mile and a half walk a couple times a day now. Yeah. I mean, so we're getting a good three miles in of a walk every day and we don't even have to leave the campground to do it. All right. What is in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank this week is an audiobook recommendation. It's called The Foresight Saga. F O R S Y T E is how their name is spelled. It's by John Galsworthy and it is just the most delectable British BBC Four radio dramatization of this beloved book. It's 15 hours. So it's the complete saga. And I think there were two or three books total, and they've been condensed into this one production. It's a full production, too. So it's full cast, sound effects, music. 
it's a really, really wonderful look at like British life between I think like 1880 and, and the turn of the 20th century into like maybe like around the 1920s into the 1930s. And it follows this family and it's just, it's fascinating. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I finished it months ago. I've been meaning to say something about it on the podcast, but if you have like a really long drive coming up or if you're looking for something to listen to when you go out for a walk, this is it. It's 15 hours and the cast is so good. It's some of the very, very best in the BBC Four like radio world. Uh, it's just, it's fantastic. You can get it on Audible. I'm sure you could get it from Libby as well, but it's worth an Audible credit if you are an Audible member. I mean, it's a 15 hour book. Fantastic. That's my recommendation. All right, Jay, what is in your black tank? Uh, I feel I feel like we're overly dissing the management of this campground. <laughs> well, no, it's um, just a, this but, could you know, be it's anywhere. A, it's an Army Corps of Engineers, so it's a government-run campground. Could it's be sometimes anywhere. Sometimes government-run campgrounds make some weird decisions, and there are lots of trees here. There are lots of leaves. There's a <laughs> ton of leaf blowing that happens in like one very specific area. Like they don't come by and blow off the leaves on empty campsites. It's really like the bathhouse that is right by us. They just, they blow the leaves into a pile. Those leaves all blow back out of the pile. And then a couple of days later, they come back and they blow them again. And the woman, I swear to God, she was doing this yesterday for over an hour in yeah. one little small area around the bathhouse. And it's very loud, which, you know, whatever. But also it, it really... Was, I was to the point where like allergies or an issue, like the amount of dust being blown up from it and stuff. I was miserable wow. last night. We had to close up the house. And at one point I had to turn the air conditioner on for a while. I was so miserable from the leaf blowing that it occurred. And I'm still not like I'm looking at it right now. Like if you're watching the video, like I keep looking back over by the area. I don't know what was accomplished. There's nothing. It's a it's, big empty field that they're no, leaf blowing. It's so weird. The whole thing's weird though, because like you said, they don't go and do the empty campsites. So we watch people when they arrive with their brooms sweeping so they can have, you know, access to like the little pad area. And, you know, they don't, they don't blow the leaves off of, um, the, the driveways either, because this is like a, these are Y-shaped campgrounds. So there'll be one driveway and then it Ys off and it's two campsites. Well, there's so many leaves that you don't know how wide the road is, but nobody comes over and takes care of that. Which is fine, they but just but keep... we but we know that they have a staff member in charge of leaf blowing <laughs> they just who keep... could be taking care of that, who is leaf blowing random weird things. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they're caring for that area over there by the dumpsters. We can't use it anymore. <laughs> like they've clearly <laughs> shut this area down for the season. It's a just really, really strange way, I guess, to like be like, I'm supposed to work till six. So I got an hour and 10 minutes to kill. You know, I'm going to go just make this giant pile of leaves over here. Why not? All right. <laughs> what is your fresh tank this week? Uh, if you are looking for the most unique RV on the road, like you want to have, you want to be that person that has the RV that nobody else has out there. You mean you don't, you don't want a Heartland Pioneer? That's not the most unique? No. You want Wonderbus? Uh, Wonder Bus was fairly unique, but this is a a better bus. I, ha I have to say, like, I, <laughs> oh, I, I know. mean, <laughs> if you would like, if you are interested, Prince's Purple Rain <laughs> Tour Bus is being auctioned off by Meekum Auctions. You could be pulling into campgrounds in Prince's former tour bus now. Prince's tour bus looks exactly like what you think Prince's tour bus would look like. It is swoops and swirls of purple. <laughs> purple rain. That's about all I can sing like, before we yeah. get into trouble. I mean, how cool would that be? Oh, well. I'm sure it's very, very dated inside. Yeah, I'm going to have to see the inside But to the point first. where it's classic now. Okay, here I got, I got the photos. Let's okay. check out the photos. All right, all right. we're going to look so at some photos. Is, it's, a, it's an old silver eagle. 
I actually don't. It's not really swoops and swirls, Jay. It's more just like. It's, it's straight lines. It's straight good. Lines. It's purple straight lines. Purple straight lines. That's a pretty I, standard. It's got like an accordion. It's got an accordion door for the shower. We got a purple black. Purple. It's, it's, it's clearly been updated a little bit. Yeah, but it's, there, <laughs> it's an electric top stove. Purple backsplash. There are there are. Oh, it's got glass. It's there, got mirror paneling. There is lots of mirrored paneling. Lots. There is lots of like edge lit glass in purple. There is the eighties are singing to me. But you know right what? Now. It just kind of looks like a bit of a standard class A R V inside yeah. a little bit. It looks actually really well kept. I mean, yeah. those leather seats don't look like they're. 30-ish years old, almost 40 years old. Yeah. I mean, that's... I'm sure they're not. I'm sure they've been reupholstered. Yeah, that that's sort of a good point. Good point. Yeah, I mean, it's actually fairly generic inside. <laughs> it is kind of... But it's Prince's Purple Rain but, Tour know, Bus. It is Prince's Purple Rain Tour Bus. <laughs> I am I wonder what this is going to end up going for. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll go that high. That's why, I, that's why I'm mentioning it to you here, because I think you have a, a serious opportunity not only to get a beautiful old Silver Eagle. Three air conditioners. But uh, but one that was owned by Prince. Yeah, lots of lots of storage. You know what? I, actually, what I like about it is that I think the interior is not unique enough mm -hmm. that you, you wouldn't feel bad renovating it. So you could renovate this bus and still be like, I've got Prince's Purple Rain Tour yeah, bus. Here's my thing, though. Is someone like, let's say you want to go to a private campground. Are they going to stick that 10-year rule on you? Oh, or are probably. you going to be able to be like, uh-uh, I got Prince's tour bus. That does not apply to me. <laughs> or are you going to say, no, no, no. This Prince is lives for uh, Prince. <laughs> this is, no, this is what you do. You'd be like, no, what are you talking about? This is a 2011. This ain't no big deal. This is just, this is a, a retro remake. Mm -hmm. 2020 retro remake because the 80s are hot again. Mm. And this is Prince's tour bus. All right. Well, I'll put a photo of it in the uh, in the show notes so you can check it out and a link to an article where you can see all the photos. <laughs> all right. Let's wrap this episode up with a brain teaser, which goes like this. It's fish related, fish related brain teaser. A trout's tail weighs eight pounds. The, a specific trout. Not any okay. trout. The specific <laughs> trout. Its tail weighs eight pounds. Its head weighs as much as the tail and one half of the body combined. And the body weighs as much as the head and tail combined. What does the whole trout weigh? Got that? No. A trout's tail weighs eight pounds. Its head weighs as much as the tail and one half of the body combined. And the body weighs as much as the head and tail combined. What does the whole trout weigh? Guess we're going to have to find out next week. Now, we're, now I just want to, I, I got to be clear here. We're not talking about the head being half and the tail being half. We're talking about thirds. We're talking about a tail, okay. the body, and the head. What do the three way and what is it combined? All we'll right. talk about that <laughs> and a lot more on next week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, we will. And of course, if you are enjoying the show, we would really appreciate if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review for the RV Miles podcast. That just helps get us in front of a new audience every single day. RV Miles is all across social media. Please come and find us. And if you have suggestions for a future topic, the best place to suggest them is in the RV Miles Facebook group. We love talking to everybody over there. But until then, until next week, stay safe, wear your mask, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.